So I've been getting an increasing number of requests in the comment section on how to use BTC Recover on a Mac. So I thought it was time to pick up an M1 Mac Mini. So basically what I'll be doing in this video is just running through how to start with a fresh install of Mac OS and to install everything you need to be able to get BTC Recover running great on your Mac. I've heard a lot of great things about the Apple Silicon, so I'll also just be taking an opportunity just to see what kind of performance you can expect out of an M1 Mac. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. It's worth saying that while I'll be using an M1 Mac in this process, uh, the procedure should be the same regardless of whether your Mac is running an Intel CPU or an M1 Apple Silicon chip. And because I want this to be as Mac native for Mac users as possible, we're even going to use a magic keyboard and I'm only going to use one mouse button. So uh, I have to work my way through the, uh, I think it's control click instead of right click. So here we go. So basically we are running the latest version of Mac. That's 12.2 uh, Monterey. And uh, again, make sure you're running at least this version for this, regardless of what architecture you're running. All right, so the very first thing you're going to want to do is just open up the documentation. So we can actually just go to btc recover .read the oh my goodness this keyboard let's try so let's just go full screen. How do we even do that? I think it's this, there we go. Okay, so for this process, we're basically gonna to go to the BTC Recover documentation, we're gonna to go to installation and testing, and we're gonna follow the process for Mac OS. Now I should say that the documentation that is on this page when you watch this video might be a little bit different to what is on here right now, and that's basically going to be because I fixed or changed something, either because of this video or because of other things in the future. If in doubt, go with what is written in the documentation here. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is what we always have to do, which is download the latest BTC recover from the master. So we'll just left click on that. Uh, yes. Okay. So let's just open that up. This is worth noting. So on all other platforms, you need to download and unzip BTC recover, but it looks like that has actually just happened automatically. So, all right, thanks Safari. So BTC Recover is downloaded and it's automatically unzipped. There it is. So step two, install Python. Now we'll go over to Mac OS. So for Mac OS, before we do anything else, we need to install the brew packet management system. And uh, you could just copy and paste this command here, or you can go to the uh, brew website and basically install it using the command they give you here. All right, so we'll copy that command and now we're gonna to need to paste that in a terminal. So what we're gonna do actually is go back down to this downloads folder that we had before. Open that up and I'll open BTC Recover. So we're actually just gonna click on our downloads folder and that's that BTC Recover master folder we had. And if we, uh, I would say right click, but hang on. If we command click, if we option click, if we control, ah, there we go. If we control click on that one, we can say new terminal at folder, because this is good. This will actually give us a terminal window at the folder we're gonna need later. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paste, um, I think, command V, yeah, there we go. So command button V and we'll say enter. So here we're gonna type in our password for this account. If your account doesn't actually have super user access, you're not gonna be able to do this. So if it's a work laptop or something, you have a problem. As you type it in, it doesn't appear there. That's normal. You just hit enter and there we go. So basically Brew is going to uh, prompt us to install uh, all of these things as part of Brew and we will just hit return. Now, this is the point we need to go off and have a coffee because this is going to take a while. Now, you do need to pay attention to this instruction here. And you seem to run, basically you need to run these two commands to add homebrew to your path. Otherwise, the, some of the things we're gonna need later won't work. So we can actually just copy this. Um, command C. 
paste down here, uh, command V, hey, hey. And hit enter, and that's worked. So if I type in brew now and hit return, it'll actually work. Whereas if I hadn't run those commands, that wouldn't do it. So we've got brew installed. So we'll go back to our documentation back to the BTC recover documentation. And the next thing we need to do is install some build requirements for coin curve. And this will also install Python at the same time. So basically this command you'll need to use no matter what kind of wallet you're using. And there are some additional modules you might need for other wallets and I'll cover them later. So we copy that command and let's go back to our terminal. How do we get the terminal? There we go. And we'll go back to our terminal and we'll just paste that there. So can I write, can I, can I control click? Oh yeah, I can control click too and say paste and we'll hit return. There we go, so Python is installed. If you wanna use any of the graphical interfaces in BTC Recover, you will need TK. So we also have to install that using this command here. So we'll just, uh, I'll just control click, copy, there we go and control click paste enter okay now once we've installed it via brew i'll just show you something that's really confusing so basically with mac os if we type in you know just python that will run python 2 that's not the one we want if we type in Python 3, that will run. The one that comes bundled with Mac OS. That's not what we want. We need to run the full Python 3.9 command because that's the one that we just installed via Homebrew. And you can see it's a different version in all of them. And if you're really, really unsure, you can just type in which Python three and you'll see that one is coming from just one of our system folders whereas this python 3.9 one is coming from our homebrew folder the exact version number that is used for python will change over time uh, but you just want to make sure you pay attention to which version of python was installed so just pay attention to that make sure you run the version of python you installed via brew so now we can actually get onto the step where we install the requirements for BTC Recover. And we just use this same command here that we would normally use. So we'll type in pip 3.9 install r requirements.txt and hit enter. And it's going to download and build everything. And now we'll just run all tests. So Python. 3.9, run all tests, vv, and hit return. And we should see a sea of green. If you try and run this using the Python 3 command on its own, so using the Python that's built in to Mac OS, uh, a bunch of these tests are gonna fail and give you fairly obscure error messages. And there we go, everything worked all tests passed, we are good to go. If you're gonna try and do a recovery for some obscure altcoin wallets and you don't wanna go working out which packages they need and which ones they don't, uh, this will do it pretty much all in one shot. So we'll just say pip 3.9 install r and instead of installing just requirements.txt, we're gonna install requirements full. So this will install basically everything BTC Recover needs for every type of wallet it supports. So let's just hit enter or return. Okay, so now that all that stuff's installed, if we just do Python 3.9 run all test.vv, it should run basically everything except for the OpenCL ones. There we go. So everything passed and all the optional requirements and that worked just fine. So now if we just type in, you know, Python 3.9 seed recover.py and hit enter, uh, it'll work just like in Windows, except, so you know, there's the thing to select the wallet file. We can choose which kind of wallet we have and go from there. We could just do a quick demo recovery for like a Solana wallet. So we'll just say, okay, we'll just cancel that. So we'll just put the address in for Solid. We'll leave the address generation limit at one. 
There we go. So we'll put in the test seed over here. And look, let's just delete one of these words out of the mnemonic. So let's say you had 23 words rather than 24. I do these sorts of recoveries all the time. So we'll just say, okay. And there we go. So because it was only missing one word, it found the correct seed almost instantly, uh, as well as that word that we had deleted. So there you go, straightforward recovery in Solana. All right, so let's see how performance goes. All right, so after a minute, it's sitting at about 67,000 passwords per second. And if we go into the system activity monitor, we can also see that everything is running natively uh, using ARM64 code. So we're getting the full performance that our Apple Silicon can give us. And just for sake of comparison, if we run the same thing on a 10th gen i7, we actually get around 90, close to 90, thousand passwords per second. So 67,000 for the M1 for a 12 word seed is fantastic. All right, and for a 24 word seed, we can see that the Mac is running at about 365,000 passwords per second, and the i7 is actually only sitting just over 400. This is really impressive performance here in that we have what's essentially a mobile class chip uh, being able to come pretty close to a high-end desktop CPU. So let's just see if PY OpenCL works. Let's see. Didn't like that. So your best bet is not to install PY OpenCL. One thing I did notice is that once your screen goes to sleep on these M1 Macs, the performance just plummets. Uh, it goes into like a low power mode. So basically what we need to do is go into the system preferences and we want to go into energy saver. And basically we need to prevent the Mac from automatically sleeping when the display is off. Yes, the Mac will use more energy in these situations. And if you're still having trouble with performance and you're running a system where you can just turn the physical monitor off or you're running a headless sort of system, you know, you can also just change this to say, turn display off after and set that to never. Uh, but most of the time, just changing this setting here should be enough. So there we go. That's basically everything you need to know to get BTC Recover installed on your Mac. And once it is installed and running on there, it's pretty much the same as Linux in terms of how the command line works uh, and other sorts of things like that. The big disclaimer that I always give is when you're doing these recoveries uh, using tools like BTC Recover, make sure you run those with your system totally offline. Even though Mac OS might be a much more secure environment than Windows most of the time, that is not an excuse to let your guard down and just go entering your seed into to your PC while it is internet connected. Make sure you only go handling your private keys totally offline. If you get stuck anywhere along the way, or if you've got some performance numbers for like an M1 Pro CPU or something like that, uh, I would love to hear about that in the comments section. And look, if you get totally, totally stuck and need some one-on-one -on -one help, there's information on how you can request a paid private session on my website below. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.